Hey guys, Mike Glover Actual here. Welcome to another episode of me talking about my photos uh, from combat. Um, as a caveat, let me remind you, um, Mike Glover Actual is my personal YouTube. You're on it right now. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification tab, and uh, make sure you go on Instagram and follow Mike.a.glover and Mike Glover Actual on IG. Also, we have the Philcraft Survival Channel, which I do a lot of combat reacts and different things, um, and reacting to self-protection especially. Go over there, subscribe, and make sure you support the channel. And leave your comments below. So, we are looking at a picture right now that I didn't take. You know, a lot of guys have gone, oh man, you took so many photos, that's awesome. And the reality is I didn't take a lot of photos. Um, I actually have a lot of people on a lot of teams that took photos because I'm in a lot of the photos. So, it, you know, I don't even think selfies existed back then. We didn't have the camera capability to do a selfie. So we we carried point and shoot cameras. I, I actually have one in that tactical tailored chest rig I'm wearing that is used for SSE, sensitive site exploitation, basically collecting evidence and taking pictures of that evidence was part of what we did on combat operations. So give you a little context of the photo itself. Uh, I got the little mousey thing here. So we're on a Jenga truck. This is what you call a Jenga truck. It's basically a, a transport truck in Afghanistan. This is the uh, mountain behind us. That's part of the Hindu Kush mountain range. And we are in some non-hospitable terrain. I mean, it's, it's pretty brutal as far as the terrain. Uh, this guy right here is one of my Afghan special forces guys. I call them ASF. All these guys in green uniforms are members of the Afghan National Army. You can see the back of this guy's head. This is one of our good guys that worked with us as a member of ASF. This time period in 05, we were just getting around to standing up the Afghan National Army and then converting Afghan Special Forces into uh, ANP, either the National Police, the Border Patrol, or the Afghan National Army. So we were taking our direct guys that we worked with because we assessed them, we recruited them, uh, we trained them obviously, and we conducted combat operations with them, but we were trying to evolve them because they, we were following you know, phases of warfare, right? So this is me right here, the handsome Asian guy, with my good friend, Master Sergeant Ben Bittner. At the time, he's a Sergeant First Class. So. Um, I got a couple questions off the side, so I'll answer some of those and then go through some of this. It says, what do you think of the CAR-15 stock for combat use? Uh, I loved it. He's referring to this right here, the CAR-15 stock. It was light, it was nimble, and it was all you really needed, right? The adapter adaptation for the quick detach sling adapter, um, which Magpul did very well and is what I use today. I use all Magpul accessories. Um replaced this and was the better version of this. But for what we needed, for what we had, this was good enough. You could also see I'm rolling with a piece of tubular nylon with a rucksack strap, um, which is the before Viking Tactics released their two-point sling. It, it might have been around the same time. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Kyle Lamb is a good friend of mine, and his sling is the best sling made. But this was actually given to me by a unit member of Combat Applications Group that I went to the Q course with by the name of Jeff. Jeff, you know who you are, who was a mentor of mine who may, who was in CAG at the time, but we went to the Q course together. He gave me this sling setup that I used and I fell in love with a two-point adaptable um, and cinchable sling. I'm sorry, but even a badass like you just can't pull off ACU bottoms. Worst pattern ever. I would have to agree with you on that. What's interesting is this is the first combat rotation that we received the ACUs. The first time I put on a pair of ACUs was in Afghanistan. And when I had them on, I went to get on a four-wheeler. And as I put my leg over the four-wheeler, I blew out the crotch. Not my physical groin, the pants of the ACUs. The most horrible pattern ever made because some general got a hookup in a deal and destroyed the army camo pattern forever. Thank God we've learned a lesson from that and have since, since adapted. Damn, that's a lot of green berets. 
Yeah, it's funny. The Afghan National Army's uh, headgear of choice in the field was the Green Beret. Um, said no modern U.S. Special Forces Green Beret ever. Uh, John Stryker Meyer didn't run through the wood line of uh, Vietnam with a Green Beret on. So why these guys are wearing this headgear? Probably because some general officer told them they should wear that headgear, but it had no um, it had no correlation uh, to how they would have to wear that headgear in combat, which is why they look pretty silly wearing those. Um, which is just dumb. I mean, it's dumb. What you should also know is Master Sergeant Ben Bittner, who was an E7 in this picture, was killed in combat in Afghanistan years later. Um, he was one of uh, my good friends and mentors. He was the 18 Charlie on my detachment. He was the strongest and one of the hardest men I've ever known. And my son is named after him. That's how much uh, I cared about Ben. Uh, ben and myself went to sniper school. We went to... Safar Tech, the CQB schoolhouse together. He actually came to the SIF company as a assaulter, and we did combat operations together again in 2008, the year before he was killed in combat. Um, he was killed as a master sergeant, as a team sergeant, uh, doing operations in Kandahar where he was leading the way. Uh, he would never not lead the way and uh, ultimately uh, uh, was killed. Um, because of a pressure plate IED, improvised explosive device. Now, setups that we had, it's why I laugh at all these guys on social media and on Instagram running around with body armor. Nobody in special operations wants to do any kind of operations with body armor. Why? You would die. Um, we're wearing t-shirts, we're wearing chest rigs, and we're wearing decent boots, and that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll go through our uniforms. Um, we kind of have uniforms on. Ben's wearing DCUs, Desert Camouflage. I'm wearing ACUs. We're both wearing um, different kinds of boots. He's wearing a solo hiking boots. I'm wearing Danner hiking boots. These are the GTX, my favorite boots of all time. Uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt, like an Under Armour Wickaway t-shirt with a scarf. Now, going back to this, this was 2005, Operation Red Wing, uh, a whole bunch of stuff was going on in Afghanistan at the time. If I can go back, I would be wearing long sleeve to protect my skin from the heat because it was hot and that would overheat you. There's a reason why Afghan civilians, even this guy right here is an interpreter, is wearing long sleeves because you're basically living in the shade. Uh, your skin is living in the shade, which reduces your overall core body temperature. I'm wearing a Jeep hat, which is a little tattered. Nice M-frame issued local uh, M-frame ballistic glasses made by Oakley. And I'm wearing a tactical tailored chest rig with kind of a wonky setup. I'm wearing a Blackhawk three-day patrol pack with my camel camelback um, a hose because I, I, I went through water like crazy there. I probably have grenades on me. I have a full combat load, which is seven magazines. Uh, I have food, water, etc. And I'm carrying a SOP mod kit version AR-15, which is basically a Colt 6920 uh, on steroids. The steroids are, I have a Pac-2 Alpha, which is an infrared laser. I got a pair of NVGs in my backpack. I got this little, see this little broomstick handle? A lot of guys ask me, like, why do you have a red one? The red was significant because in this part of Nuristan province, they would use this wrap on all of their AK-47s, on their vehicles, and it just churched stuff up. It made it look cooler. So I wanted to honor them because their AKs were wrapped in this by wrapping my battle grip in, in this. So I did. I have a, a Surefire light, which I still own. I still have that light in my kit uh, kit room. I'm wearing, uh, I'm using a Knight's Armament, I believe. It's a Knight's Armament can. Um, a Knight's Armament uh, rail system, which is like a six, six inch rail. And I'm using this weird, uh, uh, weird optic. That's a reflex sight that uses the sun and a prism to illuminate a red dot, which I thought was kind of cool because you didn't have to have batteries. So you could have that red dot and then you would use infrared laser at, at night, but you would still retain a red dot without having to use a battery. Um, my buddy Ben has an AR-15, similar setup, but he's got the 203 attachment. He's running an ACOG, which is a fixed three-power optic, and he's got kind of a similar chest rig setup with all his stuff. 
he did have smoke on him uh, the year prior. They got in a big ambush where uh, he was awarded a Bronze Star with Valor Device for a, for single handedly assaulting a bunker and taking out the enemy. Guys, this is my Afghan experience. There's many pictures like this. I love sharing this with you, especially uh, honoring men that I serve with in combat. I hope you guys enjoy these little segments. They don't get the best analytics, but I don't pay attention to that always because I want you guys to get the value. And for the guys who see value, make sure you leave your comments below and tell, tell me how you feel about it. If you served in Afghanistan, leave me your comments below, especially because you might relate to this, this time period. Um, guys, Mike Glover Actual, um, please subscribe to this in the Mike Force podcast channel where we do all our podcasts talking about war stories like this and all the things that you could do to be better prepared. Till next time, peace out. Love you guys.